Wait, you're not supposed to be here. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like you're an imposter? That you actually shouldn't be where you are? That maybe you don't have the credentials or the alphabet soup or whatever behind your name in order to justify you being a personal development coach, helping people in their life? If you felt like that, then this video is gonna be perfect for you. There is a name for feeling like you don't belong and that you don't have enough credentials to help someone else. And it's called imposter syndrome. It's feeling like you shouldn't be there. Imposter syndrome is when you feel like you're not qualified. If you feel like you're not qualified, you're probably feeling imposter syndrome. But the thing is, is that you're probably more qualified than anyone else to do what you actually do. And there's a couple of reasons for feeling imposter syndrome. Number one is just the current day and age of certifications and qualifications where someone might come up to you and say, what's your certification for doing this? What is your qualifications for doing this? There are certifying authorities. There are schools that you can go to. And I'm not knocking any of those, especially when you decide to become a transformational coach. However, when it's time for you to actually help someone, unless you're trying to help someone in the area of mental health and you need to be a mental health professional, or you need to help someone with a specific diet in order to help them lose weight and they need a medical diet in order to help them lose weight, like there are certain places where yes, by law, you need to be credentialed. But there are other places where you know you can help someone, if you can encourage someone, if you can help them discover their purpose, if you can help them improve their business or their financial situation, there are no laws saying that you need credentials for that. And I feel like what happens is a lot of really, really strong purpose-driven coaches get tripped up because they feel like, well, I don't have the alphabet soup or I don't have the credentials behind my name or I didn't get this certification or that certification. If there are certifications that you'd like to get because you think it's going to help you to become a better coach, absolutely go get them. But don't feel like you need to hold back your skills, your talents, and your abilities because someone hasn't knighted you and someone hasn't said, okay, you may now practice. So how do you get over imposter syndrome when you know that you have a passion and a purpose and you want to help others, but you feel a little unqualified? One of the first things that I would suggest that you do is to release the stress and the pressure from feeling like you have to be on this pedestal. The very first client that I worked with, I actually didn't charge her. I worked with her for free because I wasn't quite sure that I could actually help anyone get results. And so I asked her if this works really well. I'm thinking of starting a coaching business where I help people in the area of marketing. I would love a testimonial from you if it works well. We worked together for eight weeks. After that eight weeks, I was able to help her bring three clients into her business. Once I saw that, I realized, wow, I actually do have a skill for this. I enjoy doing it. I love doing it. From that moment, because there wasn't any pressure on me to perform, because I told her, I'm not charging you. I'm just testing this out. If you'd like some help, I'd love to help you. Because there wasn't any pressure there, I was able to just really focus on doing my best and performing. And once I had that experience with that first client, then I was able to start working with additional clients and charging for my services. If you're trying to get over imposter syndrome, what I would encourage you to do is make sure that you have those results to show, those testimonials, those people that you've already worked with. If you don't have those to show yet, go back to the people you've worked with and get their response, get their feedback, figure out what they enjoyed about working with you, um, maybe what they would have changed and the results that they were able to achieve as a result of working with you. Then from there, you can feel a lot more confident in yourself and in your ability to help people because you know that you've already helped others. The second thing that I would encourage you to remember is that you are not the message, but you are the messenger. Now, this is something that was a lesson for me because I am here to help creators, to help purpose-driven coaches, to help people who feel like they have a message to share. And I started thinking like, what if I just don't do anything today? Like, what if I just stop everything? What if the whole thing just crashes and burns? And then it was like a voice told me, you are not the message you are the messenger. 
So you can choose to be the messenger and deliver this message, but the message is still going to get out. And once I realized that it made me realize that if I shrink back and I focus on imposter syndrome, or I focus on people thinking that I might not be qualified or me thinking that I might not be qualified, I am going to prevent myself from being the messenger for the message. And there's nothing that says the message is going to get stopped. But if it's supposed to come through me, then it needs to come through me and I need to be ready to deliver that message. So you've got to get over that fear of imposter syndrome in order to walk in your purpose. When you start walking in your purpose, you're going to be given the words to say, it's not going to matter what people think about you, what people say about you, because you're going to know that you have a purpose, you have a passion and you have a message to deliver and you're going to deliver that message. So if imposter syndrome is dragging you down and you're feeling really discouraged about it, I want to encourage you, number one, to look deep down inside into what you've been able to help your clients achieve, what you truly have a passion for, understanding that you are not the message, that you are the messenger. And then finally, to do those things that you need to do in order to improve your skills. I'm not saying to stop learning, never stop learning, continue to improve your skills. It's going to continue to improve your confidence. You're going to be able to help even more people and that's going to make the message get out there that much more. So I hope this helped. If you have struggled with imposter syndrome in the past, I'd love to hear some of your stories. Feel free to leave those in the comments. Don't forget to like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay. Bye.